Hi guys, this is Daniel. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I just wanted to make a video on what Hindus call yugic cycles. And in Hindu spiritual texts, they believe that our galaxy goes through a cycle. And one period of the, of the cycle you have night and the other period you have day. And approaching 2012, we switched over from the dark period, which what they call the Kali Yuga. And we switched over to the light period, which they call the Satya Yuga. And I just want to explain the influence that this cycle has had on me. Since 2012, my dreams have come to life. And this cycle has actually made me a selfless, selfless person kind of turned me inside out and corrected all my thinking, uh, has influenced my dreams, my intuition and my feelings. And I thought to myself, there's some link between Native Americans, Native American Indians in America and Indians in India. I read the book, um, The Sixth Son by Sergio Magana. 2012, 2021, where he describes our, the influence that the universe has on our consciousness and how this plays a role in our spiritual development. But he described um, our spiritual unfolding as blossoming. You imagine that flowers would blossom. But this is a similar description to Indian understanding of awakening, where to describe the awakening process as flowers blossoming inside us. So I thought to myself, what is a flower? Only a carnation. So this idea of an incarnation is actually an inward flower. So what Buddhists and Hindu texts are describing is a cycle as, as if we have seasons within our own year that produce different carnations or flowers. But what they're talking about is a galactic cycle that brings about a particular incarnation, a particular personality or consciousness that would um, become present within a particular part of the cycle. So from 2008 to 2012, we were closing what they called the Kali Yuga, which was a dark or iron age. If you imagine then what would come from a dark age, only a white incarnation. If you imagine um, in the seasons of our year that if we approaching the winter of darkness, what would come only maybe a white flower? It's like a season that you expect particular plants to come. You know that they already come um, within a particular part of the year. So what Hindu and Buddhist texts are actually describing is a galactic cycle that is awakening particular personalities because of the season that the galaxy is in. So this whole cycle is described as flowers or incarnations blossoming. And it's from the seed that the flower blossoms. And it's not until the light hits the seed, does the seed begin to grow or turn into a bud? And I'm deeply convinced that this is what Hindu and Buddhist texts are describing, this whole carnation cycle or incarnation, this awakening that awakens like a flower within. And it emerges from the seed, from the sun. But its first emergence is of a bud. You imagine a bud growing out of the ground. So I imagine that this is where the word Buddha comes from, because what the, what the Buddhist psych texts are describing is actually a cycle that's awakening incarnations. So the Buddha is the beginning of the carnation. The Buddha is the bud of the flower. And so approaching 2012, our solar system crossed over the galactic plane. 
And this then brought about the emergence of what they call the return of Venus, the morning star. So this cycle is akin to a sun rising inside you. And what you would have noticed in the beginning was maybe a star, the, 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 the simple flickers or the, the dim flickers of a star coming up inside you, inside your dreams, influencing your, your intuition and your feelings. And here you have in this picture that in 2012, the, our galactic center, the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way, the sun, the earth, and the planet Venus actually lined up. And this then brought about the beginning of what the Mayans or the Aztecs called the sixth sun and what Hindus and Buddhist texts call the beginning of Satya Yuga. Our crossing over this galactic plane, the end of Kali Yuga, the dark age, and the beginning of Satya Yuga, the age of light and the age of truth. And now approaching 2021, we will enter into a period of consciousness where this sun should have rose inside us. It should be like a bright light inside us as we crossed over the galactic plane over the last couple of years. And it should illuminate our consciousness. And you see in a lot of spiritual traditions, particularly in Christianity, they talk about the illumination of consciousness, which is coming and the return of Christ. And here you have a picture of the Buddha. It will emerge within like a seed growing, like a bud, which will flower, that once the light hits it, it automatically grows. And I reflected as well in the book, The, the Six Sun 2012 2021, of Sergio Magana, a Mayan mystic and healer, where he comments on the dates that he believes that the, the changing of these suns from a Mayan perspective will happen. <clears throat> he believed that in 1991, the Six Sun was beginning to emerge and that the spirit of Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent or the plume serpent, was born in 1984. So the, the cycle, the new cycle was beginning somewhere around that time um, in 1991 and approaching 2021 and significantly in 2012, we would see um, a changeover, but in 2021 then the dissolution of the fifth sun will happen and the sixth sun will become dominant. And this then is the light within then will illuminate our consciousness within. And it's, it's almost like the judgment within Christianity where this light illuminates everything that's in our heart, all the good deeds we've done, every, every bad thought we've had. So this then brings about the coming of what Buddhist texts call Maitreya, the future Buddha, the bud that is emerging from the soil and growing into an incarnation who cannot grow until the light within um, reaches us inside. So this is like a Buddha that grows inside us all, it's inner wisdom. And he's the, the coming incarnation, so again, this whole, this whole cycle, the galactic cycle, is described in terms of flowers blossoming inside or carnations, but it's not a seasonal cycle. They're merely reflecting on the images they're using in their everyday life of the seasons and applying that to the galaxy and how it influences them, their, their personalities, their consciousness, and how it, this is bringing about a particular personality now, um, which is a white incarnation because we come out of a dark cycle. And in Buddhism, this person is called Maitreya. So here I have, it may be sound a bit trivial, but this is where I believe the word Buddha has come from. It's describing the bud coming from the seed, the seed within which we must retain, and it's waiting for the light to grow inside. And once the light hits, then it blossoms into an incarnation, an inward flower or an incar or a carnation inside. And in Hindu spiritual texts, this person is believed to be called the Kalki Avatar. And some call him the Kalki Maitreya, which is a mix between the Kalki Avatar and Maitreya in Buddhism. 
So he's believed to be a white teacher. So again, what would come from a dark age? Only a white incarnation, a white flower. This is why he's believed to be white. As we move forward into the era of Satya Yuga, the age of light, a dark incarnation will come and various shades and colors of carnations will come between that. So I think it's also interesting as well that how Hindu and Buddhist texts describe awakening in terms of lotus leaves, in terms of flowers or carnations and incarnations. And this may conjure up the idea of a beginning in a garden. And this garden is, is the beginning of the Bible, where Satan, the devil, the snake, tries to convince us to follow him maybe tries to convince us that the snake is the beginning, but what Buddhist and Hindu texts are saying, the beginning is in the garden with the seed, with the Buddha or the Buddha, or perhaps there is something before the Buddha, before the Buddha, a teacher they might call God. So this also ties in with ideas of the second coming of the Christ. If you think about the idea, the second is synonymous with time the second hand on the clock. So this whole cycle of Christ coming, Christ emerging, is all about time. So people are trying to tell you that you can awaken Christ consciousness within you, do all these yoga poses and things like this. This is wrong because this is a time, it's like divine timing. It's like, it's the second, it's, it's synonymous with time. And this also brings about what Christians call the return of Christ. Some believe that Christ um, will come in a physical body, will be one person. But many believe, and maybe my own belief, is that Christ consciousness will awaken within all of humanity and will force humanity to be selfless and to give to others. And this is a time where all returns to good. And this I find a bit, sound a bit trivial, but this is only my own interpretation. And this reflects upon a god in ancient Egypt called Horus. And I thought to myself that if, if Christ is associated with the second, as in the second coming and time, you imagine that within the clock, the second is a, a short period of time. But the name Horus may render to hour. And it kind of reflects on this idea that there's a much larger cycle with which the ancient Egyptians were measuring that may not come about um, presently, may, may take a, a long, um, may take longer than the, what we are expecting. But is there, is, there are cycles within cycles and this Christ consciousness now at the moment is, is a, it's a cycle of, it's a cycle of the second. It may be it's a, an immediate cycle. It's like a, um, we want immediate gratification, then when Christ may come for a second and may go again, but there's a much larger cycle which other permacultures were actually measuring, um, it'd be called Horus or called the hour. And if you notice here with the word Horus, strange here, if you put a C in front of it, you come up with chorus. So as we wait for this dawn and the light to come, this bud within us to grow, to blossom uh, like a flower. We need, we need to pray, sing, chant. This is where the idea of the chorus comes in with the word Horus. So there are many clues within um, ancient scriptures, ancient languages, which can help us understand how do we navigate the incoming life forces that are upon us, which want to awaken us? How do we not? waste these energies inside us. So again, what we need to do is wake up if the universe awakens us, perhaps at three and five in the morning, this is the best time to be close to God, that we need to stay awake at these times. We need to fix our gaze upwards towards the universe. And we need to pray, we need to encourage this life force, this seed within us to ascend and not let it descend into selfish thinking, into material gratification, into desire of gratification, perhaps overeating food gratification and emotional gratification, that we need to give it up 
to the universe. And this is a, this is a more sustainable way of using this um, life force that is, that is within us. Such as a video on my understanding of Ewig cycles and carnations that are coming that if anyone is worried that what they have asked for hasn't come yet, just imagine that this is like a sun that is coming up very slowly and it takes its own time. So thank you for listening and don't forget to like, subscribe and I'll see you again.